So I have to answer this question. I, I've answered this question like hundreds of times at this point over the last three years streaming, but I'm just going to answer it again. Why do you use Arch? Because I value my time. Uh, and, you know, Arch has nothing I need. It really doesn't. And, and I, I, ask, I always, I turn this around and I ask and say, like, why do you use Arch? Why does anyone use Arch? And, and you could ask the same question, why does anyone use Linux? Right? Or why does anyone use Linux on the desktop and lots of other things like that? People do it because they're hobbyists. They really like Linux. They want to push it forward. And I did in my 20s. I was obsessed. The only thing I ever put, I forced my entire family to use Linux. No kidding. During the Strong Bad era, I don't know if you remember Strong Bad, but yeah, all my young kids, young, you know, young, whatever, they all had to use Linux. I forced everybody in my house to use Linux. I was like, no, we are not going to have any Windows in here. I'm just going to be Linux and blah, blah, blah. And I've grown up. I've gotten wiser. It's like, use the right tool for the job. I'm not always going to die if you're playing a game on Windows. You know, okay. So, yeah, I mean, I was I was much more. And, and it might have been a time when I would might have used Arch before. Um, uh, the, 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 I, to be fair, I have used Arch, right? Uh, by the way, I have used Arch, um, uh, for building my own security container slash pen testing, uh, container. So Arch is really great. Uh, Arch is better than Gen 2 for such things, uh, because it doesn't require compilation. Uh, so, you know, uh, you know, Arch is also, Arch is horrible for beginners, uh, because they feel small because they can't get it to work. Um, uh, Arch is great if you want to learn Linux. If you want to truly learn Linux, uh, because you have to do it the old way. In fact, Arch, uh, Arch reminds me uh of like all linux in the 90s I mean, in the 90s we had to go through and had to do all that stuff yeah lfs and arch to learn linux that's right so if, if you're doing like uh yeah combined combined uh with lfs um a linux from scratch um uh whoops lfs um uh Arch uh, can 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 give I mean give you a solid understanding of of low level Linux, right? But that's not you don't want to start there, or I don't know maybe you do. Uh, uh, you know I, I I don't don't I I don't and I work with beginners a lot and I'm like okay again my priority for a beginner is becoming productive as fast as possible and learning things that can get you a job. Arch has never gotten anybody a job ever. You're going to send me hate mail now? You're going to write write hateful comments? I got a job just because I knew Arch. Okay, I'm going to challenge you. If if any of you out there watching this right now have got a job specifically because you knew Arch Linux, not Linux, Arch Linux, if you got a job because the job required you to know Arch Linux, I want to hear from you. And I mean it very sincerely. I'm not going to attack you. I really want to hear from you because I have never in my life heard of any job that requires Linux. However, I have heard of tons of jobs that require Red Hat, Suzy, and of course, Ubuntu Server. Not Ubuntu Desktop, Ubuntu Server. Okay, so so as I've said before, my modus operandi, the thing that drives me is helping people learn empowering skills that will also translate into employment. And and some of that stuff is not. If, if you're a hobbyist, fantastic. If you're a hobbyist, go knock yourself out. Go make a new kernel. Go go invent your own new version of Linux. Go make your own distro. That's how Sidero and Talos got started. Right? They were experimenting with LFS and they were playing around with Linux at the lowest level and they were making a new world and stuff. And, and if you're gonna, by the way, if if you're is the same thing with Rust, right? If you're gonna if you're gonna mess around with the kernel and you wanna you wanna see how more efficient it is to develop the right drivers, not kernel, instead of drivers um, in Rust and stuff, then versus see, go for it. Go for it. This is a, this is a wonderful exploratory thing, and you should do it, and I encourage you to do it. But if your priority is on learning the minimum skills necessary to get a job and keep a job in the enterprise or organizations or anywhere, then you really need to learn Ubuntu server first, hands down. 
And pretty much every container, that every Linux container is Ubuntu Server, Alpine. Some of them are BusyBox. And I've never ever used a, I've, I've never even seen a, a, a Red Hat um, container distribution, although Podman does have a lot of those. So, so that would probably be the one to use. But generally speaking, in, a, in the cloud native world, most, I'm, look, these are generalizations, I'm going to get yelled at, but generally speaking, the containers are an Ubuntu server, lightweight Ubuntu server, almost always, and cloud as well. And I mean, I mean and, and the host systems, the host virtual machines are Red Hat. The Red Hat, Suzy, Azure, uh, common containers. Now, I think I think Red Hat is increasing in popularity in containers with all the work they've been doing with Podman. And I'm I've changed my tune on Podman a lot. I really like it, especially Podman Desktop, which doesn't require you to pay like the Docker Desktop does, uh, if you're an enterprise that is. And so I think there's I think Red Hat Red Hat is still making as it's always done a lot of movement in the container space, but 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 it's just so much easier. My cluster's over here. It's so much easier to install and manage Red uh, Ubuntu servers. And, and I I hate Snap. I absolutely hate it. I absolutely hate it. it. Doesn't matter Ubuntu server, especially Netplan, and people hate it. People Linux truists they hate Netplan. I love Netplan. I absolutely love Netplan, and I I love Ubuntu in general more than Red Hat lately. I tried Rocky and all of them, and and I just couldn't get over the installer is just so bad. I mean, Ubuntu's got they 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 pretty much invented cloud in it, which is you know VM initialization. So I mean, cloud in it is the way to go. I mean, it's it that's what all of the major providers use. Uh, this is changing a little bit with Firecracker and Amazon and micro VMs and all that stuff, which is a different topic together. But, but I think, um, you know, in all that conversation over the last five minutes, there was no mention of Arch. And the reason is because it's not there. There. <laughs> so, so that's, that's what I think of Arch. I think Arch is irrelevant. I think the AUR, the most compelling, interesting thing about Arch is the AUR um, and I actually, I actually have some other stuff here. I need to pull in. Just give me a second here. So, uh, Z-A-U-R. I did, I did some, uh, oh God, what's going on here? It's not happy. It's trying to find some stuff. It's doing, it's, it's not happy. Z-A-U-R. Uh, let me see if I can grab A-U-R. I, I have, I think I have some A-U-R stuff. Nope. Those are all restaurant stuff. I could have sworn I had some AOR stuff. Nope. Nope, I don't. Arch Slender contains bugs, requires privilege. To, oh, yeah, that's another thing. I don't even want to go there. So, um, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's why I don't use it. Uh, Cloud and it's deprecated in the Red Hat sphere? Of course it is. It's a direct competitor. Of course they do. They use their own thing because they, they do everything themselves. Do we, lest I bring up SystemD. Yeah, Red Hat, Red Hat, Red Hat, the hubris at Red Hat is like totally unjustified and somewhat annoying. Because, but that is a different topic. That is a different topic. Uh, Cloud in it kicks ass, and I plan on using it for a very long time. Uh, mostly because that's what the industry is using. They're not using Red Hat Sphere. Nope. Show me one big company that's using it. One. Because, <laughs> yeah, they are not using it. They're using OpenShift. There's a lot of people that are using OpenShift. Oh my God, OpenShift is like the default in most enterprises, as far as I can see. Uh, but yeah, Cloud in it when it comes to like container initialization is like kick butt. It's really good, and I really like it. And my my opinion might change tomorrow. But Arch isn't there. Arch is irrelevant. If you want to play around with it as a hobbyist, that's fine. Just can I ask you for one 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 special favor? Please don't tell beginners to start with Arch. Okay, that's all I'm going to ask. Uh, or if you're going to do it, make sure you understand what the beginner wants. If the beginner just wants a job and they just want to use Linux for the first time and you send them down the arch path, you might end up causing them to get a bad taste in their mouth about Linux in general and then they'll never use it again. And that does annoy me. That annoys me because I deal with beginners all the time. And I have dealt with not very many, but I've dealt with beginners who have got a bad taste in their mouth because coding was too hard or because of this or that or because Linux was too hard and they left it and they said, no, I don't ever want to do it again. And they, they had this really, really bad first impression because they were recommended the wrong thing. And so to me, that matters. That matters. I spent a lot of time with beginners. And so uh, please stop telling beginners uh, uh, to use uh, Arch uh, without understanding their needs first. 
And, and by the way, if, you, if you're like a computer nerd here who's got lots of experience doing all kinds of operating system installations and stuff, and you're like, I want to understand what's going on underneath all of that, um, uh, then that might be the way to go. That may be the thing to do, right? All right, so let's just, that's the end of that Arch video. I hope, I'm, I'm going to get hate because Arch users tend to be really annoying. And, and just for the record, uh, I did try to put Manjaro in my, in my computer lab and it completely bricked everything, uh, everything. And, and my entire lab, and I had to almost cancel classes that day uh, because Manjaro. And it was because Manjaro installation was broken. And the entire Manjaro community erupted, uh, all the beginner community erupted and said, oh my God, oh my God, I can't do anything and my computer's bricked. And, they, and, and the Arch users, you know what they said? The Arch users came up and they said, well, serves you right. You shouldn't have done that. You shouldn't have done the graphic install. No one does that, dummy. That's what he said to me and everybody else. And I'm like, look, you're the one who sold us on this easy gooey install thing from Manjaro. You sold us on this idea and we all bought into it. And I deliberately bought into it because I had, I, I literally had kids crying because they were bringing their laptops in after clicking on the update thing as, you know, diligent little coders. And, and they ended up coming in and they thought they broke their computer. And the people in Manjaro, the, the users of Manjaro, and the Manjaro company itself, I will never recommend Manjaro again after this. The Manjaro, the Manjaro company itself came out on Twitter, tried to, you know, push down all the criticisms and everything like that and say how awesome they were. And, and they basically told all these beginners that they were stupid for doing, for clicking on the install button. The reason I picked Manjaro for my beginners was because it was it had a friendlier beginner interface. If I knew they were going to use Arch, I would have treated them like Arch users. And I would have given them Linux Mint, which has never once failed me. Linux Mint, Linux Mint has never ever failed me. Oh, you, you had Manjaro's worse than Arch. <laughs> I have never ever had a failure with Linux Mint. I've never had a student have a failure with Linux Mint. Hundreds and hundreds of people have used it on the desktop without a problem ever. Pop! OS has failed me mo massively many, many times. Not Mint. If you're going to do the desktop, do Linux Mint. Linux Mint, hands down. Kali Linux has never really let me down, but I've never put it really as a serious mainstream desktop, so it's been a VM, which is probably where you want it. And and so so that's that's my take on that. But but so I did have to tell you that the, the thing about Majora, because... Because the, mostly to illustrate that the Arch Linux community is full of idiots and assholes. And I hate that. The Arch Linux community uh, is unfortunately uh, full of a lot of those guys uh, who talk down to everyone, even uh, though they really don't know shit. <laughs> they... <laughs> there's kind of there's jokes in the industry about these types of people, right? So, and I, I guarantee you, there's going to be at least one of these Arch user people who didn't watch the end of this video. They didn't go all the way to the end. I promise you, watch this. Let's see how long it takes. Okay, let's see how long it takes for an Arch Linux community user to talk all kinds of shit in the comments section of this YouTube video without even watching the whole video. Because <laughs> that's how they are, and and if you, if you've been around the blog long enough, you know how to spot and s basically smell these types of engineers, and you just want to walk the other way. If they're on your team, quit and get a new job, <laughs> or or do whatever it takes to not work with them. Nobody wants to work with these people. Nobody wants to work. I use Arch, by the way. Oh, great, we're going to lunch. Yeah, I got another install here to do. I mean, there's a whole there's a whole joke series about that, and so. You know, you, you can do that. It's it's unfortunate because Arch gets a really bad name because of these people. In fact, it's kind of a meme at this point. Uh, when, in fact, there are many good things in Arch. Like the whole AUR, the whole democratization, you know, so you don't have to go through, you know, you don't have to be blessed. Although being blessed does keep you safe for a lot of times, you know, but you can go through the AUR, which is the Wild West, you know, or you can use a Peru, which I found out about, which, you know, is kind of a safer AUR. I mean, that kind of thing is 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 powerful and it's you know it's a, it's a free exchange and, and 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 there's a lot of innovation happening on arch you know on the arch front because people can go the arch is generally up more up to date than ubuntu which can be less dangerous and more dangerous it just depends on your parameters um so so and it's a great way to learn linux bottom line so so those are all the reasons that i would use arch but i don't because i don't need to do any of that i don't i don't need to do any of that i need to be productive I, i'm not i'm not hacking a kernel right? Like, like other great streamers and YouTubers. I'm trying to get shit done that doesn't have anything to do. So I just want my operating system to work. Uh, and that's, that's why I do. All right. Enough of that. Try it if you want.